What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Guys, we're back here at our reactor turbine setup. This is where we left off on the last episode, actually, the same spot. Uh, I have made some changes since last episode, and I wanted to kind of show you guys some of the changes. So you can see behind me, first of all, our water connections are now on the side instead of on top. Yeah, and on top, we have the return water kind of being distributed a little bit differently than what we had before. You can see we have a bunch of these quantum entangled porters, and each one of these are set to their own specific channel, and they have six connections being pushing out into these ultimate mechanical pipes, and that's being distributed down here into the top of our dynamic tank with a lot of connections. <laughs> and then we still have this one here for our sink water if we need to fill it up from uh, this guy down here anyway. And then, yeah, we're extracting all the water from the side, and that's coming up through a pipe and connecting to the top up here. This is our water input into the reactor. Uh, yep, and I think... Yeah, I did add in a few more connections here. So our quantum entangler port, instead of sitting directly on top of this fission reactor port, we're actually up a block, and then we are pushing in steam through two different sides into the quantum entangler port. It's actually kind of important, depending on how much steam you're producing that you have multiple inputs on the sides and then you can see down here we have the uh quantum entangled porter pushing out to multiple sides and going into here we are still producing everything just the same like we were last time but i have this set to a rate limit of 30. i did bring this up you the reason why we have all these changes over here let me let me back up is because i did start bringing this rate limit up i think i was able to get to like 70 or 80 or something like that and then yeah we needed more water supply and all of this kind of stuff uh but there is there's a problem that we have here in fact look at all this craziness i got going on <laughs> right here we're currently making uh two million fe per tick <laughs> yeah the problem is the waste yeah so we need 20 waste barrels for every millibucket every millibucket of this nuclear waste that we're making we need 20 waste barrels to dissipate that if we're making one millibucket per tick we need 20 milli we need 20 waste barrels to dissipate 20 mil or yeah uh one millibucket per tick right you see we have a lot of waste barrels here so here's here's where the problem is so the currently this is five deep and it's 17 long so each one of these layers not the not the sandwich but just one layer that's 85 waste barrels we have eight of these in total eight layers four sandwiches i guess if you want to think of it that way for a total of 680 waste barrels the problem is we need 600 waste barrels i believe is what it is for 30 millibuckets we could increase this i think to what 34 for 680 <laughs> but yeah if we want to go higher than 30 millibuckets we're going to have to have an enormous amount of these waste barrels so i decided you know 2 million fe per tick this amount of waste barrels we're fine and you know getting back to the problem that we were seeing last episode where one of these waste barrels was the chosen one and i was extracting out and putting it back into the system i think the problem is the reason why that one was filling up is because we had not enough waste barrels connected to the pipes yeah i think what was going on is it was trying to evenly distribute to everything else and then the leftover stuff went into that one chosen barrel and that's why it was overflowing but yeah, once you get enough of these barrels connected, I don't think you start running into that problem. Um, yeah, you can see down here, we didn't have enough connected and we had uh, some of these that are quite full. They're still depleting. Mm hmm. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's where we are with that. So I have way too many water connections here, but it's fine. We're just going to leave that alone. There's no reason to change it now. Uh, we have enough waste barrels here for the 30 millibuckets per tick that we are currently burning. So that's fine. We don't need to mess with that anymore. Uh, the one thing that we do need to do today, though, is we need to take the plutonium, or I'm sorry, polonium that we have generated over here and turn this into the polonium pellets. Yeah, that's what I'd like to work on. I think we can actually get rid of this stuff. We have to transfer the gas out of here into another machine. I think we can transfer from this into the other machine first and then take the rest of it. I don't know what we're going to do with the leftover polonium that's in this, though. That's something for another day to worry about. But so if we wanted to make that polonium, let's take a look back into here. 
So, yeah, the polonium pellet. We need a PRC, right? And then we need fluorite dust in order to do this. And then we got to figure out the spent nuclear waste. I think that's probably going to end up going into this radioactive waste barrel, which will dissipate that over time. And that is different than this stuff, which is just regular nuclear waste, right? So we can't just dump it into there because it's a different fluid or gas, whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let me go ahead and get a PRC and then we'll start making some of the polonium pellets. So our pressurized reaction chamber has been fully upgraded. We got our eight speed and our eight energy upgrades in there. We got power. I went and made some fluoride dust and I got that installed into here. And in order to make this polonium pellets, we do need any Minecraft water and polonium. So first things first, let's get the water in here. So we'll set this side config fluids to the back, auto eject on, get rid of this. And we want sink water. So we should have a water being ejected. We need to accept it here. So from the back input, was I on the right one? Fluids, fluids, back input. Why, why, why is this not working? <laughs> Did I not set auto eject on this? Input, output. How about I set it to the right setting over there? There's our water. Okay. So we have water installed over here. <laughs> we need to get the polonium into this now. So let's grab this pressurized tube and we will bring this over like so. Now I need to get myself. Oh my goodness. I thought I had the wrench available, but I don't. Here it is. Okay. So the configurator, this needs to be set to gases and we will eject out of this. So this radioactive waste barrel now is completely empty, which means we can get rid of it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, we can finally get rid of that guy. So we'll set this back to wrench. We will get rid of these guys. We no longer need any of that. Cool. And then we can go ahead and extract the polonium into this PRC over here. So let's do that. So we'll set this thing back to gases and get extracted no do I have to push it gases front output eject is it all in here now hmm hmm is that not a gas <laughs> I'm not sure gases auto eject on output front how about if we do input output front it is not extracting that so why not Okay, yeah, I guess it would help if we went to the gases tab and we set this to an output. There we go. Okay, so now we have our polonium pellets over here. We have spent nuclear waste, radioactivity, and then that we need to put into this guy here. So, uh, yeah, we need to figure out how we're going to do this. So we need gases. Yeah, gases config. We want the right hand side. This will be the output. We want that to set to auto output. Okay. And then we need to put that into here and spent nuclear waste. There it goes. It is now depleting. So the problem is we are now left with 1.3 buckets of polonium. I guess I could get myself another fluorite to get rid of 1000 millibuckets of that turn into another polonium. I think this stuff's safe to put in your inventory. It doesn't say it has any radioactivity, unlike this stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with the other third of a millibucket of this stuff, or a third of a bucket. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe we make a pipe really long, really far out over there into a waste bucket barrel and then just forget about it. Or we could just leave this all here. I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's not hurting anything for now. We can just leave it here, but... Yeah, that is a thing. <laughs> anyway, so we have our polonium pellets now. So this was the thing that we were going for for a while. This will allow us to make our solar recharging unit. Let's go make a solar recharging unit. The solar recharging unit requires a three polonium, requires four of these reinforced alloys, an advanced solar generator, and a module base. I don't believe we have these two metal items. Let's double check this. I don't think we do, though. Yeah, we don't have those, but we can tell the system to craft up those four other components, the reinforced alloys. Yeah, we can do that and have those go in their spot, but we need to do something about these two. So module base does require 10 ingots plus bronze nuggets. 
bronze? We don't know how to make a bronze nugget, so we could teach the system how to do that, or we could just make it ourselves. I'm not sure which way we should go about that, but I feel like, yeah, we should just tell the system how to make nuggets. <laughs> I think it'll be fine doing that. We'll just find a home for that right into here, and then module base. We, oh, that required HTPE. Oh, it does. I didn't even see that there. What a sneaky little guy that is. So our HDPE setup, where did we put that? I cannot remember, not down here. Uh, well, is it in here? It is in here, right here. So check this out, we are completely full. So let's go ahead and just grab eight of those is all, oh, okay, I guess we're taking a full half stack then. A full half stack? <laughs> we're taking all of the HDPE that I brought with me. All right, we'll put that away. We'll do one of those numbers. There's an HDPE sheet. So now we should be able to make a module base. There we go. So we have two of those. So now we're just missing the one item here, the advanced solar generator. So let's go ahead and make a recipe for this guy just to make it simple on us. So that's going to require four solar generators. The solar generators require solar panels. So we don't know how to make those solar panels and we have these ingots, that's no problem. Okay, so we need solar panels. And that is osmium redstone infused in glass panes. Okay, so I mean, it looks like we have everything. It doesn't seem like this is gonna be too complicated, but it's definitely one of those things I don't wanna have to craft by hand. So, solar. In all capital letters are yelling at the computer. There we go. Let's turn off caps lock. So what are we doing here? We are making everything and it's done. Okay, that was relatively painless. And there we go. And here is a solar recharging unit. Harness the power of the sun to charge your mecha suit. Install multiple for faster charging. Stackable to eight. So this only is supported the mecha suit helmet. Okay. Well, we have done such things as this. So we can get rid of this and that. So the final things that we need here for our impossible, improbable probability device, we need the advanced solar panel, which we already have. And we need an eternal obsidian skull. Okay. You know, since we're making the two mil FE protect, let's go ahead and get rid of this thing. We can just throw this into the system. I don't want to accidentally craft another one of those. These, well, I guess we couldn't <laughs> because this takes so many bites or whatever. But yeah, let's just throw that in the system because we're going to be using it here soon anyway. So, eternal obsidian skull. This is going to require an eternal Stella. Oh, plus an obsidian skull. Obsidian skull, we can just craft. We have obsidian ingots and a skeleton skull, which we have none of those. Skeleton skull if we had skeleton essence and a blink skull But again, we have none of those so we can make ourselves a this is probably the easiest way for us to get a skeleton skull is to make ourselves a Cleaver from tinkers and just go kill some skeletons I'm actually kind of surprised. We don't have a skeleton skull mob drops possess skeleton Interesting uh, Lou fabricator if we had the skeleton prediction. Oh wait do we have, hmm, maybe we could do it this way. Let's, let's actually just take a step back for just a moment. Do we have the stuff to do that? Oh, it won't even show me. I was trying to see <laughs> in applied energistics if we had this stuff. So we need that, which would be this stuff here. Phosphate, hydroxide, and calcium. Do we have that stuff? No, okay. Uh, yeah, we don't have that stuff. Okay, just double checking. Maybe there had been like a faster way for us to do it with the machines we already have set up. Okay, so we need the obsidian skull and we're gonna need this eternal Stella. This thing, I do realize, is gonna be a crazy thing. In fact, I remember looking at this previously. If we go into, I think it's Forbidden Arcanus. Yeah, it's all the way over here. We are all the way over here at the welcome. <laughs> we haven't even touched this mod. So yes, in order to get over here, we're going to have to do a bunch of questing. Mm -hmm. So I guess first things first, let's just work on getting the uh, skeleton skull. We'll do this stuff. Is obsidian ingot something that's hard to do? Let's find out real quick. Obsidian with iron smelted and obsidian with iron. Oh no, we can just do that right now. So four of those and we just smelt those. 
our smelting factory right here. Boom. There's our obsidian ingots. So the only thing we're missing is the skeleton skull. So it's just kind of looking at our Tinker's Construct stuff that we have. We never really got like really into Tinker's in this mod pack playthrough, but we did make a few things. We got like a Tinker's chest, the Tinker's anvil, the part builder here. Um, we did make this book. This is the highest tier book that shows us all the materials. And it looks like the highest tier materials like Supremium and Imperium are the materials that we have access to. That's pretty easy for us to get. I guess we probably could make some manulin, but we're going to do Supremium. So if we're going to make a Supremium tool, well, I guess it doesn't show right here. If we're going to be making a Supremium cleaver, we're going to need the blade, the, the tough handles, and then the plate. I think the plate takes eight ingots. I think the blade takes eight ingots, and I think these are three each. So uh, yeah, after totaling all that up, that's what, 16, 19, 22? I think you need 44 Supremium Essence in order to make those. I was just looking at the ingot here. It is two of these Supremium Essences per Prosperity ingot in order to make one of these. And then this you can melt down just in the smeltery. So yeah, we're in the process right now of making all these Supremium Essences. That's uh, taking just a little bit of time. We never set up a thing to automatically convert our Inferium Essence to the red stuff. We should have done that, but we never did. <laughs> anyway, so we're just crafting this up pretty slowly, just going in the background for right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and craft all these parts. So since we never really made any patterns, uh, I had to make three of these different wooden parts. Yeah, so we have the tough handle, the large plate, and the broad blade. I just made that out of oak. So pattern plus however many material cost it, it took. And then, yeah, we have that. So, oh, what is going on here? What is this? Gold bars. X is empty casting in a casting table. What the heck? Can I just turn that back into, can I melt that? Looks like I can. That's weird. Huh, I didn't even know those were a thing. Am I going to have three ingots again? Okay, very good. So really what we need to do is take this, the tough handle, put it here. We are going to pour gold around it to make the cast. There we go. And then we turn that back off and there is our tough handle gold cast. And then we can pour in other materials into that thing in order to fill it up to make it out of like the Supremium ingots, for instance, right? So, yep, there we go. And then we have the large plate and these just cost one gold ingot per, right? Yeah, three ingots. And now we have them all. Very good. Okay, so now that we have these, I can go ahead and start casting out like the tough handle. So I needed a total of six ingots for two of those. So we'll just melt that all down and then I'll pour those out and cast them. So here we go. We have all the parts ready for making our Supremium Cleaver. We have the broad blade, the large plate, the tough handles. We could have made these out of different parts and like mix and match them and get some different abilities. But the only thing we're really concerned about is getting ourselves severing. We're also getting Prosperous 4 on this. Each part of this gives us Prosperous. So as we attack mobs, we can get extra prosperity shards which is cool i guess uh but yeah the uh, the cleaver comes with severing two which is nice so let's just go ahead and craft that up all right so there we go quest complete cleaver we did it so we can throw that in here and we can put a book and cool on there that'll give us an extra upgrade slot we currently have two that'll give us three so there's writable okay so now that we have that we need to get extra severing on there so that was the only way that I could see that we could put more modifiers on our tool. I think there was extra ways you could do that previously, but I'm not sure that's still a thing. I was kind of going through all of this and I didn't really see any other way. Um, but anyway, so upgrades, weapon, we want severing. So in order to put severing on there, we need necrotic bones, lightning rods, and TNT. Well, TNT, we need five of those, or I guess we'd only need three. We need lightning rods. I don't even know how to make those. How do you make those up? Oh, very simple. Three of those. And then necrotic bones. We need six of these. We only have 5.1 million. Not sure if we're going to be able to afford such things as that. So there we go. So that'll give us severing three. Severing four. And severing five. I do believe with severing five, that makes it so you have a 100% chance of getting a mob skull when you kill them or is it 50% chance 
Uh, I don't remember now. <laughs> well, anyway, we have a pretty good shot at getting ourselves a mob skull. So we want skeletons and probably the easiest way to get a skeleton is just going into the nether and over to our fortress over here. There are regular skeletons and the wither skeletons that spawn. Was that north? I can't remember. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's north. Uh, yeah, so we're just looking for a regular skeleton. And of course, since we're looking for a regular skeleton, there are like none that have spawned, but plenty of wither skeletons. Do you drop a skull every time? Oh, probably need to turn my magnet on. I did not get a skull, so maybe it's 50% or maybe it does not work on the wither skeletons. I don't know. By the way, I'm going to find myself a skeleton. <laughs> I'm just going to keep despawning mobs and respawning them until we get them. And yeah, we'll be back, guys. You know, in the vanilla game, you can find wither skeletons all over the place in the nether. But guess what? Not in ATM 7 to the sky. Nope. No skeletons at all. Only wither skeletons and blazes and those special boss monsters were spawning there. So I ended up going to the other once again into, I think, one of the structures. I don't remember which one it was. Anyway, I found two skeletons, killed both of those, and one of them dropped. So our, um, yeah, our sword is not 100% on the severing, but, you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's at least 50%. Let's just call it that. Anyway, so we have a skeleton skull, and we wanted to turn that into the obsidian skull, and there it goes. What was that? I don't know. Can I wear this one? Oh, I can. Huh. There you go. Yeah, you can wear this one. <laughs> Alright, so we, uh, we now have- oh, I need to take that off my head. We now have that one, and then we wanted to turn that into the eternal obsidian skull, but in order to do that, we need the eternal Stella. So this is where we are right now. <laughs> we have to get into this mod. Yeah, so as we saw before, oh, what did I get here? I have, so oh, right, we uh, got the cleaver. There's 100 XP for us. As we saw before, that's the forbidden and arcana section in order to get there. We're going to have to go through this entire tree. So what I think we're going to do today is... Whoop, well, I guess we'll leave that on. I think what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and call it here. Next episode, we'll jump into the other tree, into Forbidden Arcanas. That's a mod I've never played with before. So we'll get to experience something new, check that all out, and hopefully get to that Eternal Stella. And it won't take too terribly long, but maybe it will. Again, I've never used that mod, so I don't know what kind of a process we're in for. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.